Here's a fascinating integral that we're going to solve using a rather unusual substitution that does come in handy quite well when we have integrals of this kind of structure. Then later we're going to make use of the dilogarithm function. Now the dilogarithm of x equals the negative integral from 0 to x of the natural log of 1 minus t by t dt. And the dilogarithm function is something that you'll encounter quite a lot in higher physics. And it has a very nice series expansion, which is the infinite sum over positive integers k of x to the k by k squared. Now, if we make use of the substitution, this will imply that the differential element dx equals negative 2 dt by 1 plus t squared. And it does a good job of um, sort of manipulating the other rational expressions in x like this uh, 1 by 1 minus x squared. So 1 by 1 minus x squared equals 1 by 1 minus 1 by 1 minus t by 1 plus t squared, which simplifies out to 1 plus t squared up here in the numerator. And down here, you should have 4t squared. Yeah. Oh, no, wait, it's definitely going to be 4t. Yeah, 4t is what you're going to have. So that's uh, another term sorted out. We're done with the differential element. And now for this uh, argument of the natural log function. So we have 1 plus x by 2x. Now this will become 1 plus 1 minus t by 1 plus t divided by 2 times 1 minus t by 1 plus t, which which sorts out quite nicely to, um, I'm going to have to slip it down here. This is going to be equal to 1 plus t, 1 minus t, 2 by, now it's just going to be 1 by 1 minus t. So with all the terms sorted out in the t world, and the limits of integration are going to become, the lower limit is going to be, now as x approaches 0, uh, we see that t should approach 1. And as x approaches 1, t should approach 0. So you're integrating from 1 to 0, which is kind of weird, I get that. Anyway, so you have uh, this negative 2 because of the differential element. So let's just uh, put that outside of the integral. And you have a 4, another constant over here. So let's just write it in that manner. And you can switch up the order of the limits of integration and get rid of that negative sign. So you're going to have, that was 2 by 4, right? So 1 by 2, integral from 0 to 1. And now with all the constants sorted out, you can get to uh, the variables in the t world. So you have... Uh, Oh yeah, first, first up we had this term, 1 plus t squared divided by t. Then you had this natural logarithm term. Now the natural logarithm term becomes the natural log of uh, 1 by 1 minus t. And the differential element was dt by 1 plus t squared because we dealt with the constants earlier. Now the utility of our weird substitution is that you get lots of terms later later that cancel out very nicely. So like these terms here, they cancel out. And you have a 1 by 2 outside. And this is the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 by t times the natural log of 1 by 1 minus t, which is quite similar to the definition of the dilogarithm function, which indeed, in if you use the uh, properties of the natural logarithm, and reciprocate its argument, you'll get a negative sign out here. So the negative sign and the integral are both the uh, dilogarithm of x, and x in this case is 1. And the dilogarithm of 1 can be evaluated quite easily using the series expansion. And that series expansion is the sum over positive integers k of x, which in this case is 1, to the k, which we all know is 1, divided by k squared. And this is something that has been following me around lately. It's the uh, Raymond zeta function evaluated at 2. And that's a, a horrible 
zeta function notation over there sorry about that and this evaluates to pi squared by six link in the description below so the answer to our integral is actually quite nice it's pi squared by 12. anyway my food is finally here so thank you see you next time be sure to like and subscribe